Okay. You guys are so far. See, I, you were closer right then, and I was getting sick. <laughs> no. Alex, I no. Swear to God. <laughs> Okay, I just want to say a couple of words about, um... Sorry, Avery was calling me, so I'm calling you back. <laughs> That's fine. Where is my father? Oh, he's upstairs. I didn't realize because he was all filming himself. Yeah. Oh, Where's Avery? Oh, nice. Oh, no, I have a black marker. I was like, can somebody throw me, can you throw me those black markers? Throw them here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, one. I gave you six. I gave you nine. <laughs> oh, that was not very camera friendly right there. You rolled it. It's fine, it's fine. I hope I don't. Ah! I'm kidding. Okay, I'm going to very quickly go through these. I'm not going to go through all the delta function replacement calculations. I'm just going to skip to the answer. But I think there's a couple of important uh, things that I need to point out. So um, let me consider another process, which is A. B goes to B A. So this is a scattering process. Okay? And um, this is interesting. What is the lowest order diagram that you can build this out of the ABC theory with? Would you have to have two vertices? You have to have two vertices. Okay? And it turns out that there's two ways to do it. What's the other way? What's the other way? What's the other diagram? You guys gotta pay attention. I'm gonna let you go in a minute. The C is vertical. Yes, the C is vertical. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, you could put in correction factors for each of the legs. So you can put in a loop into C, A, B, or A, B over here. So that obviously you get a lot of diagrams if you allow yourself four vertices instead of two. Okay, and then you have vertex corrections. So it gets really, uh, really complicated. But at lowest order, these are the only two diagrams that contribute. All right. Um, if you calculate M for this one, you only have one internal momentum, but it turns out you can evaluate the entire thing uh, with a, um, without a leftover integral because the delta function that you write down um, is the delta. You're going to have two delta functions for each vertex, but you've only got one internal momentum. So two delta functions and one internal momentum you, means you can use one of those delta functions to get rid of the internal momentum, and then you'll have that delta P out minus P in to zero. So the G. In this case, the M1 comes out to be G squared over P3 plus P4 squared minus MC squared squared. And for this one, M2 comes out to be G squared over P2 minus P4 squared minus MC squared C squared. So what are you calling one, two, three? Yeah, uh, you'll just you'll look at my diagram. So this uh, so this is uh, momentum P one. This is momentum P two. This is momentum P three, and this is momentum P four. And it's the same assignments in that second diagram. Okay. Wait, who are we waving at? Oh, there's Sarah people we know outside. Do they want to come in? I think they're waiting for something. <laughs> <laughs> So here M, M is just M1 plus M2, okay? Um, now, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review a, a little bit more confusing of a situation, and this is where I'm bringing these, 
example from there. This time I want to consider A and A going into B and B. Okay? What diagrams can contribute to that? But oh, what's the lowest order? Two thirds. It's three. No. One. Three. So you know you got A and B. What does A and B have to connect to? C. C. And then A and B have to connect to C. So it's just like this, except. interesting because it turns out that's not the only way we can also do it this way now remember this is going to be p1 this is going to be p2 this is going to be p1 this is going to be p2 p3 Ready? Yes. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> How is that any different? What is that? So that's, not that's a hopping over the line. It's not an interaction. That's not a vertex. This is just hopping over that line. They, they don't. I'm doing it in a plane, obviously, but you know, in three dimensions. Well, that's an interesting question, okay? It, do I get a different M? Well, let me go ahead and label these external momenta. And then I'll give you what you get. And I do the derivation in the notes, but it's, it's really not that bad at all. So I get, for this one, P3 minus P1 <laughs> squared minus MC squared, C squared. And for this one, I get M is G squared over P4 minus P1 squared minus M C squared C squared. Okay? And now I want to just make an assignment. Let's suppose that I wanted P1 to be 100 with whatever unit of energy you want. And I wanted P2 to be 2, P3 to be 101, and P4 to be 1. It's just making the incoming momentum equal to the outgoing momentum. But I'm looking at particular assignments of the external momentum because those are real things that you can go out and measure. Okay? Are those two M's the same? Well, what's P3 minus P1? P3 minus P1 <laughs> is 1. What's P4 minus P1? Negative 99. Are those two M's the same? No. Okay. So you have to include the switcheroo of identical particles coming out. Okay. In addition, you have that 1 over S factorial that goes into Fermi's golden rule. So there's a lot of subtleties that come in to this simple story that we started with, where we just said, oh, I'm going to consider a process with A coming in and B and C coming out. For example, when we have identical particles coming out, things get more complicated. And of course, things are going to get more complicated when spinners get involved in the story. Yes? Is there a rigorous way to know like, how many vertices you're going to need to have, how many each ones? Like, that second one wouldn't have been obvious. Is there a way to know that it has to be there? This, the, sorry, this second diagram? Well, the second diagram is, is only, the, the second diagram is obvious because you have two identical particles coming out. Yeah. But, like, is there a way to know that you're going to have two of this lower order thing and, like, X of something with three or four vertices, et cetera? Like, is there a way to know how many of vertices you're, you're going to need? Yeah. Like, how many vertices you need to have and what? I don't think that there's an algorithmic way to do it. You just have to think about the situation 
and construct all of the diagrams with us at a certain order with a certain number of, which is counted by the number of vertices. Yeah. Um, so go into the second diagram. Mm -hmm. Could you have just redrawn the first one and switch to three and four because it's assigned in the line to the other particle? Um, yes, but this is what I was saying, and I'm glad you mentioned that. It's really important that you, if you're going to draw all, not all of them, but even the first few terms that contribute to this, you want to label your external momentum on this picture, and then you want to make sure that all your external labels are the same, which involves this meticulous thing. But then, now that you've got these assignments, I agree, you can untwist this, and you can say, okay, what this B comes out with P4, this B, but it's just... It, it's, it's easier to fill out the diagrams if you just go ahead and start with the external momentum matching what you have here and then figuring out what combinations you need. But, but yes, you can now switch it back or you can just leave it like that. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? All right, so that is, um, that is it for today. Next time we shall throw Dirac onto the ABCs a Feynman calculus, and I have no idea what format we'll be doing that in. So, uh, but I'll let you know as soon as the thirtieth comes. And we got for email. Say it again. We got for email. Yeah, yeah, I'll get I'll get an email out to you. I mean, I have ideas of what I could do, but I actually kind of need to be uniformly acting in the way that the rest of the campus is acting, just so you don't have to have like, oh, I got to go to Zoom for this and YouTube for that and blah 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 blah. So. I do, I do think like YouTube live streams would probably be the easiest option because you would be able to put it like straight, like you wouldn't have to record a thing to post on YouTube if you still want to do that. If you live stream it, it'll just save that. You don't have to like double count it. Also, I think it's way easier to use Zoom. And there's a full chat. Well, we're going to have to use Zoom for the classes, so I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But, but here is a question. Well, it doesn't matter because I would. How many of you actually want to be live participants of the lecture versus just watching a recorded lecture? All of you, good. That's what I'm happy about. But that's because if you all raised your hand and said, no, nah, I just watch a recorded lecture, then I'd be like, okay, 2018, go watch it. <laughs> but no, we won't do that. Okay, yeah, you're free to go. Oh.